And what we're going to do is go ahead and pick up uh, where we left off last time. Uh, hopefully, you've had a chance to um, go back and look at some of the basic things. Looks like a lot of folks have given up. Um, that's up to them. Um, but um, for the folks that are here, I think it's worthwhile to uh, continue on and hope that we uh, are picking up some of the key points here uh, as we go through and we talk about the various methods for determining uh, the flow of inventory. Okay. And um, we talked about, we're going to, and we mentioned last time, three methods. Uh, specific identification, which you can see on the slide now, FIFO, first in, first out, and LIFO. Uh, and then there's another method called weighted average. So those are the, the three that we'll spend most of our time on, those last three, LIFO, FIFO, weighted average. Uh, specific identification is one that um, is pretty straightforward, okay? When an entity uses the perpetual inventory method, which is what we talk about in this class. Uh, see if I can get my pen here, okay. Um, what will happen is they will um, have to update their inventory account after each purchase. So let's say they go ahead and they purchase these three uh, TVs and assume before they're sold that they are obviously sitting in inventory. So this TV would be sitting up here. Right, this TV will be sitting up here. Okay, those little boxes are the TVs before they um, sell them. So what would be the journal entry as they purchase each one of these TVs? So there's one for 750, there's one for 700, and there's one for 800. What would be the journal entry uh, for purchasing those TVs? Say they purchase them on account. Really, we're going to do this again? Um, debit inventory and credit uh, accounts payable. Good. I'm going to debit inventory each time. Okay, I'm just writing inventory <laughs> times. You could have summed those and wrote them all in one line item. And then I'm going to credit accounts payable. And what's the total to the accounts payable? 750 plus 700 plus 800 is... Two thousand two hundred and fifty. Two thousand two hundred and fifty. Thank you, Elizabeth. It looks like you're the only one that's interested in uh, getting a good grade on the test, and I'm just going to go with that. Okay, so we would debit inventory for those amounts, and <clears throat> our inventory would then show those three amounts. And of course, the accounts payable, which we're not going to get into accounts payable in today's discussion. That will be on your class, how to handle, I mean, on your exam, how to handle discounts and whatnot. But in this particular case, good, we just go ahead and we would debit those inventory amounts for that. Now, what happens when, we'll start with this guy since he's over here on the left, when he purchases this item, okay, the entity would have to do what? What do you think, Elizabeth, when he purchases, let's say he purchases on account. Oh, if he purchases on the account, he would have to uh, credit inventory. Good. Okay, we're going to credit inventory. I'm just going to write it over here. I think. And then debit accounts payable. Good. We'll credit inventory 750 and we'll credit, I mean, a debit, excuse me, accounts receivable. Oh, receivable. Right, for 750 okay. because we're going to get some money from this guy later, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, that's, well. That's wrong? Well, I got a little confused. I should have said to you, uh, they sell it for $900. It cost the entity 700, but they sold it to him for 900, right? Oh, okay. So then, I should have mentioned that. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So then it'd be 900 instead of the 700. Debit okay. accounts receivable for 900, but what right. do you credit? Oh, uh, credit inventory for the seven hundred. Well, and when then you the, sell something, have you earned the prop, the revenue on that? Not if he, not if he, um, in um, 
on account, right? Well, he's taking it. So Wait. then you, you would credit uh, revenue? Okay, I'm going to credit sales for nine. Oh, sales. Okay. Revenue sales. Okay, so I seem to see it called sales revenue sometimes. That's fine. Okay, okay. now what do you want to do to account for the inventory? Mm. You would have to um, make the 700 a zero. So it would be credit inventory? Credit Cost inventory. of goods sold. What about cost of goods sold? You can't just call out an account name and not tell me if you want me to debit it or credit it. Seven hundred. Okay. Credit inventory for seven hundred. Professor. Uh huh. Uh, so you, so it costs nine hundred, not seven hundred. No. Okay. In business, companies want to make money, right? So they're going to sell it for more the sales price. Okay, when you go to the store and they say $900 on the price tag, is that what they paid for it? No. Right, they paid what? They paid in this example, 700. Um, and so they're making some money off of this, right? Oh, okay, yeah, right. Okay, so what do you want me to debit here in this journal entry? Uh, they After um, the customer bought it, yeah, they, the customer bought it. They're going to send the customer a bill for $900. We credit the sales for $900. Elizabeth told me I credit inventory. What, you want, what do you want me to debit? Mm. What do you want me to debit? Anybody? Somebody said it. Debit cost of goods sold. Good. Debit the cost of goods sold. Okay, this is the last chapter, guys. Debit cost of goods sold 700. Good. Now, what would be my gross profit on this? When I prepare my income statement, I'm going to show what uh, sales, right? The sales, wh what do we report on the income statement? 900. Okay, well, good. What number gets reported on the income statement? In the multiple step income statement, what number do we report? Gross. Net income. Net income. Good. Okay. Gets reported. And we calculate net, net income by taking what? Sales minus what? Expense. Well, in the multiple step income statement, we have sales minus. Cost of goods sold. Minus the cost of goods sold. I'm going to abbreviate that COGS, cost of goods sold, good of uh, 700 in this example. And that would give us a gross profit of what? Gross profit. I want to G that I see. Gross profit of what? 200. 200. Okay, good. And then I would continue to calculate my operating income by subtracting my operating expenses. And then I would have non-operating items in the calculation of net income in the multiple step income statement, which we covered pretty thoroughly in chapter six. And um, it's something that will be on your uh, exam. Okay, question. Okay, good. So we have this gross profit 200. Okay, so well, what, what happens when, when she buys it? And let's say she pays a thousand for this one. Oh, let me credit my inventory 700. Okay. Now she buys this one for a thousand dollars. I guess it's a fancier TV. So she pays a thousand for it. Now let's have her pay 1200. Pretty nice TV. So she pays 1200 for this one. It costs the company, the TV dealer, 800. What would be the journal entry? The um, sell to her for for $1,200. What would be the journal entry? Would you credit inventory for uh, $1,200? Okay, well, what did... Just by analogy, what did we do here when we sold this guy the TV that cost us 700? When this guy bought this TV for 700, what did we do? Accounts receivable and cost of goods sold. 
Okay, just just look at the journal entry that we made when we sold it to this guy for 900. Now we're selling it to her for 1200. So accounts receivable for 1200 and cost of goods sold for 800. Please give it to me in the form of a journal entry. Um, accounts receivable uh, debit 1200. Okay, so accounts receivable for 1200. I'm kind of writing these on the opposite side of where the people are. Debit the accounts receivable for 1200. Stop. What did we do when she when he bought it? Are you seeing this right here? Yeah. Okay, what did we do when? Let me highlight it. What did we do when she, when he bought it? Um, you guys debited sales too, right? Okay, that uh, maybe it's hard to see. That's a debit to the left and a credit to the right. Oh, okay. So you credited sales. Okay, so I credit sales for twelve hundred. Okay, what else do you want me to do? And the cost of goods sold would be 800. Uh, Good. 800. Just go ahead, say it. Debit 800 for cost of goods sold. Good. Credit. Inventory. Good. Credit inventory. I didn't want green, but forget it. I'm not going to go back. Credit inventory for 800. Good. So when I credit the inventory for 800, what's the balance now in the inventory account? Mm, would you debit it since you're closing it? No, no, you don't close inventory. You don't. The, ba the balance would be 750. The, the balance, balance would be zero. Not on this plan. No. The balance is 750. Okay. This is a T account. This that I wrote over here is a T account. So these are kind of hard to see on the screen. 750, 700, 800. If you know you look at it, these two are balancing each other out. So I'm left with the balance of 750. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Which is what they're telling us would still be an ending inventory? Correct. 750, okay, which is kind of where I was just trying to quickly go with this whole discussion, but it, it looks like we're having to really struggle through just the basics from the very beginning of the class, which is a little daunting. Okay, all right, good. Um, so that specific identification, as you purchase an item in inventory, you debit inventory, you credit, most of the time accounts payable. Sometimes it could be cash that you pay. And then <clears throat> as you sell the thing, you book the sale, you're going to sell it for more than you paid for it. So you'll go ahead and book the sale, debiting accounts receivable, crediting the sales. And then as the um, you know items are taken out of the inventory, as you sell them, you debit the cost of goods sold and credit the inventory for what the company paid for that. Anything that's left in ending inventory is sitting there on the shelf and our accounting records reflect what's in there. Okay. Now, moving on, most entities use some sort of, cost. well, I shouldn't say most entities, many entities use some sort of cost flow assumption when they're accounting for their inventory. And you can see that the more popular one is first in, first out. Then comes LIFO. LIFO is often used by oil companies uh, because it gives them a more favorable tax uh, position. And so they like to use LIFO. And then uh, average cost is used by some entities. And then 15% other, there are some things like the gross profit method. Um, I think I have a slide at the end of this. Uh, chapter that talks about gross profit method. I won't be um, testing you on those kind of boutique uh, methods. I'm just going to focus on 
uh, FIFO, LIFO, average cost. And we've already talked about specific identification. Guys, don't worry about you know the, the the heading for the illustration you're like are we in chapter seven or chapter six we're in chapter seven you see some things on the slides that refer to another chapter don't worry sometimes i steal them from different places and put them on these slides okay okay good now you come over and let's first talk about first in first out okay and they tell us that under first in first out otherwise known as fifo okay they tell us that the cost of the earliest goods purchased are the first to be recognized in determining the cost of goods sold. Okay. Um, companies determine the ending inventory by taking the unit cost of the most recent purchases and working backward until all units in inventory have been costed. I don't know how helpful that last thing is. Okay. I'm just going to give you an example. Let's just look at that first. And sometimes. These slides put nonsense on it. I don't know what, the, what they're even trying to say there, to be honest with you. Okay, but let's just go ahead and let's do this little example. Okay, now, um, do you go ever go to uh, Safeway? Ever been to Safeway? Yes. Okay, and when you go to Safeway, you go to the back usually, and in the back they have the milk fridge, whatever. Okay. Yeah. And so you go back there and you see the milk sitting there. Okay. And um, here's the safe way. And you see the milk fridge sitting back there. Okay. And what happens when you come to the milk fridge? You buy that milk say on um, March 1st well I don't care when you buy the milk let's do it this way I'm going to put this is you the shopper okay that's your grocery basket or whatever okay that's you and you're coming in and you're going to buy these milks now Safeway does Safeway have a pretty good distribution system? Do you think? Do you think Safeway has a pretty good distribution system? Like for milk or like this is general? Well, everything. I don't know why we uh -huh. think it's different for milk than anything else. Do, do you think they have a pretty good distribution system? I think it's okay. <laughs> Go ahead, get in the way of a Safeway truck sometime. Let's see what happens to you. <laughs> okay, they have a massive distribution system is the only point that I'm making, right? Okay, so what happens? You come over and when Safeway gets the milks, they are delivered and they put them sort of in the back of the freezer. And then you come and you take them what? from the front of the freezer, okay? Yeah. Now what happens? <clears throat> this is a first in, first out inventory system. I mean, act goods actually flow that way. And when Safeway gets these milks, let's say they bought these on March 1st, and let's say they cost to Safeway for, fifth, uh, for that's not right, 425. Now they'll get some other deliveries on 315. Don't worry about what the current date is. And you know, they maybe had paid 450 for those. And then they'll get some, say, towards the end of the month. And Safeway's paying 475 for those. Now we're in an inflationary time. And so it's not surprising that maybe as you know, time goes on, Safeway is having to pay more for those milks. Now, how much do you think Safeway will charge you for those milks? Probably like five to $6. Yeah, okay, let's just say $5. And I really don't know, my numbers may be off. So I wanna say, no, you don't pay $5 for milk. I don't know, okay, I really don't know. I, I have a bad- Some places habit. you do. I have a bad habit. When I go to the store, I don't pay attention to cost to anything. 
I, you know, I would always walk out. I'm like, okay, I don't even know what they just did on the thing. And I look quickly. You sound at, like my kids. Yeah, they I do the same it. thing. <laughs> I don't get why I, I'm an, and I'm an accountant. Okay. So anyway, we go ahead and we pay the five dollars. Uh, and Safeway is using first in, first out inventory method. So when they sell you that milk, okay. Now let, let's say you reach to the back of the freezer and you grab the refrigerator or whatever, and you grab one of those 475 ones. You ever done that? You reach back there and you get one with a later date on it, right? Um, what does Safeway do? If they don't do anything, I don't think, unless they see you. They just well, they, no, they, don't, they, won't, they won't kill you. They might <laughs> change the dates on the dairy products or something, but you're not looking, okay? But from an accounting standpoint, what do they do? They assume, even if you reach to the back and you grab that 475, the one that cost them 475, or you go and you jump in the truck and you hijack the truck and you take the milks from the guy before he even puts them on the shelf, it doesn't matter. Safeway is going to assume, it's a cost flow assumption. Safeway will assume that you bought the 425 one. First in, first out. Since they got that on 3-1, they just assume that's the first one they sell. It doesn't matter if you grab the 475 one that cost them 475, they're going to assume that you got one that cost them 425. So what would be the journal entry then if you bought one of those for the sale and for the inventory? So you go, you put it in your cart. That one goes in your cart. This is the cost of goods sold now for them, right? This is ending inventory back here. So what would be the cost of goods sold if you bought one of those 425 ones? Under first in, first out. It'll be uh, you debit cost of goods sold four twenty five. Good. Debit cost of goods sold four twenty five. What do you want me to credit? And you credit inventory for four twenty five as well, right? Excellent. Because you assume that they took the first one, first the first one first out. Nice work. Beautiful. Okay, so my inventory. And when I bought those, I'm not going to do the whole journal entry, but I would have debited it for 25. I would have debited it for 50, assuming they just bought one, right? And I would have debited it for 75. When I say I, Safeway, they would have credited cash, accounts payable, however they're paying the farmer, their vendor, whatever. Okay, good. And you just told me to credit for 25. And what's your name, sir? Where'd you go, Warren? Uh, yeah, uh, Warren. Uh, <clears throat> and what about the sale? Don't you want me to book the sale? Oh, uh, and then say you pay cash, but you pay Safeway cash. This person pays Safeway cash. And then do you, you would, uh, you'll credit your sale for four twenty five, right? For cash, for cash for four twenty five. Well, they're paying five dollars for it. Oh. Yes, they're paying five dollars for it. Yes. Giving so the Safeway five dollars cash. So yeah, so you you credit five dollars. I, I need Safeway's accounting. Safeway's receiving uh, cash. So they debit cash sales for five five dollars. Debit cash for five dollars. Good. What do you want me to credit? And then is Safeway making money? Or yes, they would make a uh, twenty-five cent profit from it. Okay, but, okay, but that's not what I'm asking, and it wouldn't be forty-five cents. But that's not what I'm asking. I'm I'm saying is Safeway earning revenue by selling you that milk? I think Safeway I, in the business of selling people food. Yes. Are they selling? milk to to somebody yes so have they earned a revenue yes when a company earns a revenue what should i do you um from an accountant you, 
Credit revenue. Good. I'm going to credit revenue, sales, whatever. Synonymous for $5. Good, because they earned that, right? That's the whole journal entry using first in, first out for that transaction. Debit cash, assuming it was a cash sale. Credit sales, $5. Debit cost of goods sold. Credit inventory. Yes. Oh, we did? Okay. Do we have a gross profit on this? Can you calculate the gross profit on this? If I were to prepare my income statement, I want to show my gross profit on my multiple step income statement. What should I do? You would um, get cost of goods sold or minus revenue, right? Or Okay, the other way around, though. I'd have the other, other way around, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Revenue plus Sorry. Sales, $5. Cost of goods sold, I know, is what? Four twenty-five. Four twenty-five, and, and so we have a gross profit of how much? Twenty-five cents. Will that be seventy-five cents? Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Use, use, your, use your calculator, guys. <laughs> there, and I'm not saying use your calculator because you can't do it in your head. I'm saying use your calculator because it makes you stop, put the numbers in, look at the numbers that you're putting in, and seeing what the result is. Um, you know, calculator gives you a visual display of your calculation opposed to numbers just sort of bob bobbing around in your head. Okay, good. So that's gross profit of $75. Excellent. Now, Warren, let me say something. That work that you just did, okay, is, you know, this is why you are studying anything, is to do that work. We've got 13 people here in class today. Two of them are me. So that's 11 people, okay? Um, anyone who thinks that they're not going to put in the work and get anywhere is sadly mistaken. So congratulations for that hard work. That's what you need to do to understand this stuff, okay? It's not easy, but it is easy. It's not easy in that you got to work. It is easy in that once you do the work, now you got that. Okay. All right. Into that speech. Now, when we look at the balance in the ending inventory now, how, what is the balance in the inventory account? It would be uh, the ending balance. Let me use my, you know, let me use a calculator. To okay. Good. Ending balance. 925. 925 is the ending balance? Yes. Okay, because we've got more debit left there than credit. That's what the ending inventory are those things that haven't been bought yet, right? Okay, now you look, and again, even if you had grabbed this one, they would assume that it's those last two that are sitting there. Okay, it's a cost flow assumption. Okay, excellent. Now, let's say they they sell another one they sell this one for five dollars what would be the journal entry now for the next sale Just give me, you, 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 go ahead yeah go ahead give me go go ahead yeah well i, I, I wasn't can you say that again yeah they sell the next one they sell another milk okay so you um for the inventory, you would they would assume it would be four fifty, so you would be have an ending balance of four seventy five, and you credit four fifty. Okay, good. I'm gonna credit inventory four fifty. Oops. Good. What do you want me to debit? I need debit. Um, was it cost of goods sold for five dollars right no what or did it cost them 450 okay good and what about the sale the sale will be you are you still selling it for five dollars right yeah yep will be for five dollars five dollars cash they sell yeah it. cash for five dollars debit Every, every time I ask for a journal entry, the first word out of your mouth should be either a debit or a credit. Okay, yes. good. Debit debit cash. cash for $5. Good. What do you want me to credit? 
and then you credit sales for five dollars. Good. Beautiful. And my gross profit is what? 50 cents? Around 50 cents, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Nice. Good work. Okay. That's called learning. Now the ending inventory is what? 475. Good. And that's the one that's left. Now, again, you know, the balance is 475. <clears throat> uh, now, again, I don't care if you had taken that 475 one and then later you took the 425 one. They assume that that's how it flowed out. Okay. Under the first in, first out inventory method. Okay. Now, um, what I want to do now that we sort of understand that is close this right now and discard all that and i want to look at this in class example that we have okay and um i'm looking at this and i'm telling you that um this company bought these different inventories okay these different batches okay and they bought four thousand units on three one they bought two thousand units on 315 again i'm just making these dates up and they bought the rest of these units on 330 okay now um they i tell you that four thousand units in total were sold so if they just started business the beginning inventory would be zero right the uh, purchases were 9,000 units. The total were 9,000. So I would have the units purchased. I'm just looking at units here, guys, not dollar amounts, just the number of units. So units available, okay? The units, the goods available for sale, the units here are 9,000. Since they sold, what? 4,000, they have 5,000 units that are left in their ending inventory, okay? And what I want to do is I'm going to ask you in this same fact pattern, okay, and you may see something just like this on your exam, what would be the amount for the inventory and what would be the amount for the cost of goods sold using, and we have the different methods, FIFO, LIFO, and we're going to do weighted average when we come back, okay, uh, after we look at the weighted average uh, discussion in the slides, okay, but right now, we have understood FIFO, right? So if I'm trying to calculate the cost of goods sold now and the ending inventory using FIFO, I would look and I'd say, well, okay, they sold 4,000 units and under FIFO, we say what? We say that the first units you bought are the first ones that go to cost of goods sold. So since they did what? they bought those 4,000 units and they sold 4,000 units. They assumed that the ones that they sold are those 4,000 that cost 425. So that means that what? The cost of goods sold, the answer to this question is 17,000. Since they have what? 5,000 units left in ending inventory. We know that because they started with zero. They bought 9,000. Then they sold 4,000. Then the units in ending inventory are 5,000. How will we cost those? Well, we're saying, hey, these, and it doesn't matter how they actually sold them. They're saying that these two, the ones that are left, the 5,000 that are left, 2,000 of them cost them what? 450 and 3,000 of them cost 475. So when you do the math on that, of those 5,000 that are left, when you do the math on that, you sit there and you say, well, okay, for FIFO, 2,000 at 450 and 3,000 at 475. That's 9,000 for the 450 ones, 14,250 for the 3,000 ones. And so you go ahead and you add those two numbers together. That gives you this 23,250. So that's the ending inventory amount. Question.
question. You sure? Okay. If there's not a question on that, if that's clear as to how you would do that, because that's how I'm going to test you, let's go ahead and let's move over to um, <clears throat> LIFO. Okay. Now, when we talk about LIFO, okay, um, The cost of the latest goods purchased are the first to be recognized in determining the cost of goods sold. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the cost flow seldom works that way. Okay. But it doesn't matter because FASB says you can use LIFO if you want to, even if your goods don't flow that way. And what happens uh, is, for example, Safeway could use LIFO, even though you're going to do what? You're going to be grabbing those uh, 425 ones. They could use LIFO if they want. Now, they say that there are examples of companies that would actually use the, the actual flow, I should say, would be um, a LIFO method. And they talk about things that are in piles. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you an example here with a pot. And I don't know, some time back, a long time ago, I had some work done in my backyard. And I told the guys, yeah, I want to put some rock back there. And they said, okay, well, you have to come to the rock place with us to choose the rock. I'm like, I don't care. No, you got to come with us. Because I guess they had had the bad experience that they put a bunch of rocks in someone's backyard, and then they had to take them out. So they said, no, you got to choose. Okay, so I said, okay. So we go to the rock place and I realize, okay, this is an actual LIFO flow of inventory. What happens? When the delivery truck comes, okay, this is the delivery truck. This is Rocks Inc. Truck, okay. When the <laughs> truck delivers the rocks, what do they do? They just dump it on top of the pile. I mean, they're not going to sit there. You've got all these piles of rocks. They're not going to sit there and you know flatten everything out. They're just going to dump it on top of the pile. Now, when you come with your landscape or whatever, and you come to pick those rocks up, okay, in your little truck over here, and um, oh, let me just say, when they get the deliveries, they get the deliveries. There's some 425 ones that come in 3-1. There's some 450 ones that come in at 315. That's what the rock company is paying. And there's some 475 ones that come in at 330. Okay. Now, here you come to pick up the rocks, and they're going to charge you $5 per pound of rocks or whatever. Okay. And you grab a pound of rocks. When you grab those, do you go to the bottom of the pile? Would you no. dig through the bottom? No. What are you going to do? No, you're going to grab gonna, them the top. You're going to take them off the top. And what's going to go in your truck is 475. I mean, yeah, it's 475. So now when we look at that, what? The cost of goods sold to them is 475. What's an ending inventory? Ending inventory has those at the bottom of the pile, doesn't it? Those ones they bought a long time ago? Yes. Okay. Okay, good. So let's take a look at that now. So if we look at inventory, we have the 475 ones. We have the 450 ones. We had the 425 ones. Okay. And when we buy, when you come in, you buy those, what's the journal entry that's made by the rock place? You pay $5 cash for those. Do you credit inventory for 475? Good. What do you want me to credit? I mean, what do you want me to debit? Then you need debit. Um, cost of goods sold for 475 
Nice. Good. Anything else? And then for sales, you 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 debit or yeah, you debit five dollars. To what account? To cash. Cash. You debit cash for five dollars. Okay. What do you want me to credit? And then you credit. Have they earned money? The right. Oh. Yeah, sales. Yeah, so okay. you, you debit, you credit sales for five dollars. Good. Excellent. What's the gross profit? Uh, um, goes for seventy five, twenty five cents. Good. Now, if you are Safeway and you chose to use last in first out, because you could choose. You could just say, I don't care how I'm actually selling the goods. FASB lets me pick, excuse me, last in first out. Okay, they just let me pick it, last in first out. Would you rather use LIFO if you're Safeway, or would you rather use FIFO if you're Safeway? And I think I lost my, um, I lost what I had written, but, for uh, safe, use safe, they sold it for five dollars. Was the sale? Hang on, one sec. Was the and the cost of goods sold was the four twenty five ones. Okay, yeah. so they had a gross profit of seventy five cents. Seventy five cents. Okay, um, but when I was uh, using uh, Lifo, if I was Safeway, because they could do that. I'm showing a gross profit of 25 cents. Who would you rather be? Uh, FIFO for because yeah. they're bigger, bigger profit. Or, bigger gross profit, right? So they're going to look like a more successful company, right, Elizabeth? Is that what yes. You're... Yeah, I was going to say that. Okay, but here's the problem. Who's going to pay more tax? So FIFO because of how much more profit you make. Good. FIFO is going to end up paying more tax, the FIFO method. So what happens? Um, there's a rule in, in, in accounting and FASB that says if you use LIFO for tax purposes, mm -hmm. you must use it for financial reporting purposes. In other words, you can't have your cake and eat it too. We're not going to let you pay less tax and show better financial results. <laughs> so companies often you're saying well why would a company if this is what's going on and we're usually in rising prices why would a company ever choose lipo over fifo the reason is they want to have the ability to file their taxes using lipo so they have to use it for financial reporting purposes that's called the lipo conformity rule okay question okay good now we come over and let's go back to the little in-class example here. And uh, let's take a look and see what happens when we use LIFO. Okay, same fact pattern. Same fact pattern as before. Same requirement. I want you to calculate the cost of goods sold and the ending inventory amounts using LIFO now. Okay. So cost of goods sold, and just to remind ourselves of the fact pattern, they did what? They bought the units in the three batches that you saw up there, the 3-1, the 3-5, the 3-30. They bought 4,000 in batch one, 2,000 in batch two at 315, and 3,000 in batch three at 330. They bought 9,000. They sold what? They sold the... 4,000. So under LIFO, we assume that they're going to sell which batch first? Give me a date. The 330. The 330. Good. Under LIFO, we assume that they sell the, um, the 331s for four, uh, the cost okay. of 475 each, right? Good. So we go ahead and we take that 3,000 times the 475. Now those are all gone, aren't they? There was only 3,000 of them, and we would assume that now all of those are sold 
this I can do it this way. All of these are sold now. So those are all gone. Now I need another what? 1,000. 1,000 units. So I take those 1,000 units and now I use this unit cost of 425. 1,000 times, where am I? Like, well, 1,000 times the, did I say 425? 450 amount now is what? 4,500 for my cost of goods sold? Yes. So calculate my cost of goods sold, 14,250 plus the 4,500. My cost of goods sold is 18,750. Yep. Now I have what? I got 5,000 units left in my ending inventory, don't I? Yes. Okay. And how am I going to cost those? Well, if I'm assuming that I sold 1,000 of those, that means that there's still a thousand left. Yes, a thousand or fifty ones, right? Yes. So I go ahead and I say a thousand times the um, four fifty means that um, I have that thousand times four fifty. That's in the cost of goods sold. And then for my ending inventory, that's the ones that are left. The thousand times the four fifty. That's forty five hundred. And to make up my total 5,000 units in ending inventory, I assume I haven't sold any of those. And think back to the pile. At the bottom of the pile, none of those 425 ones are sold, right? And so I would multiply that out. I take the 4,500 plus the 17,000. That gives me this 21,500 for my ending inventory. That's the stuff at the bottom of the pile, right? Question. Okay, now weighted average is the easiest one. And I was, I guess I was going up to the table and using the weighted average calculation. That table information was the same that was that was up here, right? Okay, now what weighted average says is look, I'm just going to come up with a weighted average cost per inventory item. And then when I make my calculation of my uh, cost of goods sold and my ending inventory, I'll just use that weighted average number, okay? So what happens? I had nothing in beginning inventory. I purchased 4,000 in the first batch, 2,000 in the second batch, 3,000 in the third batch. Same facts, guys. That's a total of what? 9,000. I add up all my costs. The reason they call it a weighted average, weighted average means that you are weighting each one of those prices by the number of units that you acquired. So 425 is getting a weight of 4,000. 450 is only getting a weight of 2,000 because we didn't buy as many of those, right? That's what we mean by weighted average. You go over, you extend those out, you add these together, you get the total. You then go ahead and divide that by the total units and you have a cost per unit and guys, if you're doing this on your calculator to sort of check the calculations, I think it's something like 4.47222222, but I didn't feel like writing 52 twos to make this work out, okay? Now, to do the ending inventory, you simply take that um, number that you're, then you need on your calculator the irrational number. So you see me pulling up my calculator because I need the big old irrational number that comes out when you divide uh, 40,000, the total cost of everything I bought, divided by 9,000, the total units I bought, that gives me 4.47222222, whatever. And then if I'm trying to get the cost of goods sold, since I sold how many units? 4,000. 4,000. I take that 4.47222, whatever, and I multiply that by 4,000, and I get 17,888889, okay, which I have um, rounded to fifth, 17,889, yeah. right? Okay. Again, I take that irrational number, 40,250. I divide that by the 9,000 units. That gives me uh, 4.47222, same number. 
I multiply that now by what? How many units were left? 5,000. 5,000 units, right? We, again, just to make sure we're clear where the 5,000 came from, we bought nine, we sold four, so we have 5,000 left in ending inventory. That's yeah. where that 5,000's coming from. You take that 5,000 and you multiply that times the um, 4.472222222, where am I for weighted average? And you get 22,361 is what we are valuing that ending inventory at since we have um, those 3,000 units. I mean, excuse me, 5,000 units left in any inventory. Question. Which one do you think is easiest? FIFO, uh, FIFO weighted average. A weighted average. Weighted average to me is the easiest. I don't have to sit there and do mine push-ups trying to say, how many units did they sell? What was the cost of them? How many units? Are I just take the average, weighted average, and then I multiply it by every number of units they sold for cost of goods sold, the number of units that are left in ending inventory for ending inventory. Question. Okay, now I didn't go into journal entries a lot for this stuff. Again, um, what the company would be doing is they would be assuming that the goods are flowing in the direction for FIFO LIFO whether they were actually flowing in that direction or not um, is not relevant, okay? Okay, good. Now you come back and um, there's the average cost. And I figured it was just best to show you the example on average cost. So there's a slide for average cost, okay? Now let's just, uh, for you know, interesting understanding here, I don't think I'm gonna test you on this stuff that's on here, but, I think it's worth a couple seconds to, you know, make some observations about the different methods. Okay, major advantage of FIFO is the cost allocated to ending inventory will approximate current cost. Because what's happening? They're saying that those milks in the back of the fridge are still what's in ending inventory. Okay, even if you even if you grab those. So that's showing what they most recently had paid for those items. Remember those came in at 3.30, whatever. So my ending inventory is pretty much showing what the current value is of my inventory that I had just purchased, okay? Um, now, a problem with FIFO is what? It's kind of uh, showing a higher net income than is realistic for the company to maintain. Because right now, we're saying, hey, we're selling those for $5 and the only cost is for 25. So we're showing a gross profit of 75. But the reality is that soon they're going to be reporting what? They're going to be reporting 475 as their cost, as those going to cost to get sold. And soon there'll be what? There'll be squeeze on their profits, right? And so, um, you know, and a potential investor is looking at this saying, oh boy, I like this, you know, nice gross profit, right? Meanwhile, what's coming? This, where there's not as much gross profit and now the investor's gonna be, well, what happened? I thought I bought a stock of a company that was, you know, gonna be increasing their revenue. And all of a sudden I see this drop. Now, of course, the companies could do what? The companies could say, well, we'll fix that. We'll just go ahead and we'll start charging, you know, four, seven, uh, five, seventy-five per thing. We're going to start showing our gross profit of a dollar. What's the problem with that? So the company just said, well, we'll just raise our price. What's the problem with that? What's the problem with just raising the price of a product all of a sudden? Um, people won't want to buy it or they would go to another yeah. store. There's a question as to the elasticity of the uh, product to price, right? Price elasticity. Maybe people will start saying, well, okay, I'm not buying milk anymore. I'm just going to start drinking water or something, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, um, a shortcoming of LIFO is the cost allocated to ending inventory will be what? Significantly understated. 
So what happens here? Now we're looking at the pile and we're saying, hey, you know, we recently paid 475 for these things. They are now, you know, um, you know, but but we sold those, so those are gone. So when we're showing our ending inventory, we're showing you that our ending inventory has a cost of 425, when really the ending inventory has a what would cost us 475 to get those things back. The advantage of LIFO is that what? Under LIFO, my gross profit is more realistic. I'm showing you $5 as my cost. I, I mean, as my sales price. My cost is what? $4.75. So I'm showing you gross profit of $0.25, cents, which is pretty realistic as to what's going on at this point in time. Okay. Okay, again, I probably won't test you on that stuff, but I think it's worth understanding what the effects are of uh, and uh, the, of the two methods, okay? Um, <clears throat> so under FIFO, our uh, inventory and net income are going to be higher. Under LIFO, we're going to have what? Lower income taxes, okay? But we'll show a smaller gross profit Companies choose LIFO, as I said, because they sit there and they say, well, look, I don't want to pay as much tax. Okay. Okay, good. Um, inventory is to be carried at lower of cost or market. Okay. So when we look at some items, and this is very easy, okay? We have something that cost us 60, the market is 45, excuse me, 55, the company will have to carry that at the lower, which is lower? Come on guys, which market is lower? Value. The market is lower, so I would have to report that at 55, good. So when I bought this thing, I would have debited inventory for 60. I would have credited whatever accounts payable for 60. It's showing now in my inventory what? $60,000. What am I supposed to put it at? under the lower cost of market assumption. 55,000. 55, so how do I turn an asset account balance that's showing 60 into 55? You credit the difference or 5,000? Good. Caution. What? Excuse me? I'm sorry, I thought it's a washing. You thought it's a what? Wash sale. I don't know what that is. Okay, so how do I turn it to 55? You you credit 5,000. Okay, good. I'm going to credit inventory. 5,000. Okay, I have to debit something, don't I? I would debit... And the accounting standards give me an option of debiting that straight to cost of goods sold if it's not material, or if it is material, then I would debit it to loss on inventory valuation so that I can show that on my income statement as a line item. Okay, so let me, let me write that a little better. So I would debit the loss for 5,000 credit inventory. I'd report that loss on my income statement. And when I go ahead and I post that credit, now I have a balance of what, 55,000? Is that yes. what I wanted? Yeah. Now my inventory is showing at that lower cost, okay? So you go through and you do that by group of inventory, individual items. You could do it for your entire inventory. If you do it item by item, like they're showing here, that gives you the most conservative outcome, okay? But now I start to look and I have satellite radios that cost me 45. The market is 52. What should I do? What should I report at the cost or the market? 
the cost. cost. Cost is 45, good. Uh, whatever this, some of these things, nobody would, their right mind would buy a DVD recorder anymore, but the cost is 48 and the market is 45. The market is probably zero on these now, but what would I report it at using this information? 45 good. market. Good. DVDs cost me 15, market's 14. Again, they're probably worthless now. Market. But market. The, the 14 market. Good. Okay. So very straightforward uh, approach there and you can make that adjustment to the inventory accordingly for each item. Okay. <clears throat> okay, good. Um, inventory is a current asset. Cost of goods sold is subtracted from sales to give us what number? Our gross profit. Good. Beautiful. Okay. And then there would be disclosures. Every set of financial statements has a um, disclosure called significant accounting policies. And in that, um, the entity would go ahead and... Uh, show you whether they're using LIFO, FIFO, weighted average, et cetera. Okay, question. Okay, good. So here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna end this. Uh, yeah. I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna do this. Uh, I'll do this next time, okay? What I wanna do is get you started on something. And then I'm gonna ask you to finish it so that next time when we reconvene and we're pushing towards our midterm, when's the midterm? It opens next Thursday and stays and closes on Monday? Close it on Tuesday, March 14th at 9 a.m. Opens on what day? Thursday. Thursday. March 9th. March 9th at 12 noon, just after our next week, to, a week from today's class. This is the second. On the 9th, the exam will open. It'll open at 12 noon and it will stay open until what? Until Tuesday, March 14th at 9 a.m. just before class, a half hour or so before class, and then we'll have class on the uh, 14th. So we've got two more classes of lecture time left to get our, you know what, together, my final 12 here, to get our stuff together, final 10, because my top 10, okay, because I'm kind of, okay, to get our stuff together to be successful on this exam, okay? Um, and so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to look at some questions from the practice midterm for chapter, what chapter is this? Chapter seven. I'm going to look at the questions from the, some of the questions from that practice midterm, get you started. You are to continue to work those questions over the weekend and whatnot as we head into uh, next week's class, I'll go through that practice midterm with you. I'll go through a comprehensive practice midterm that's going to have questions from both chapter six and chapter seven. And then, uh, oh, and don't forget the exam is only going to cover those two chapters, chapter six, chapter seven. And then on Thursday, we'll do one more round of practice midterm questions from chapter six, chapter seven. And by then, the 10 of you anyway, should be ready for your exam. Okay, so let's just go ahead then and let's start that. <clears throat> I already opened that, I guess I did not. <clears throat> it's okay, close it. I'll come and I'll talk about this next time too. Uh, I don't feel like doing it now. I think we've got enough in our heads right now to be able to do this. So what I wanna do is I'll put the comprehensive practice midterm two up here, guys. <clears throat> okay, I'll put that there. Um, but for chapter seven now, I think that's it right there. Let's 
Sorry, can you this? There it is. Okay. All right. Good. Let's look at this one. And uh, let's see. Uh, how do I want to do this? I'll tell you what. I'm going to do the FIFA one with you. And then what you're going to do is you're going to do the rest to ask about the other inventory methods. Um, ah, shoot. Except I don't want these questions. Um, I'll repost this. I'm going to take these out. We we're not going to cover this. This is not necessary. Okay, but let's just go ahead and um, you know what? You know we might be able to do almost this whole thing. Let's just do it. Okay, we're we're gonna. Okay, I got a better idea. You do this, okay? So what I want you to do, okay, is I want you to do this practice midterm. Don't worry about this question seven and eight, okay? But you should be able to do the rest of it. And then what we will do is we will reconvene. You may not be able to do, you can try this one, but uh, we'll work on it. Uh, don't worry about the chapter references. Uh, we'll, I'll show you how to, we'll, in fact, that's how I'll teach you this is we'll, we'll work this question next time. But for homework, you should be able to work question one, question two, three, four, five, six, not seven, not eight, nine, ten, and um, twelve, you probably would need some help with thirteen. Okay, that's your assignment. Come back ready to rock on that stuff. Um, and you will see that that is going to start to pay you some pretty good dividends, right? Uh, towards uh, being successful on the exam. And then what we'll do is we will go ahead and um, do a comprehensive practice midterm next time. And then we'll do another one on Thursday. And we'll go through this stuff together. Chapter six and seven on the exam, guys. That's it. Okay. Question. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a nice night. Okay.